Hello, everyone. Welcome to ArcadeCast, the video podcast series from LAI Games, where we talk about all things arcade and location-based entertainment. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, hitting that like button helps us reach a wider audience and let us know that you like the content that we're creating. Also, hit that bell if you want to receive notifications. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the importance of staff training. So as the owner of an entertainment venue, your staff are the lifeblood of your operation. It's everything from knowing just simply how to answer the phone to expertly dealing with problems on and offline. And you need to make sure that your staff are properly trained and equipped to do the job. So today we're speaking with author, speaker, and CEO and founder of Trainertainment, Beth Stanley. Welcome, Beth. Hey, I'm so glad to be here and um, excited to be invited. <laughs> Can't wait to see what Absolutely. we're going to do today. How about that? Yeah, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. I've had some great conversations with you on and offline, and I think this is going to be a great episode today. Thank you. I'm glad to, I'm glad to be a part of it, and I can't, I can't overemphasize what you said about staff being the lifeblood of their business. It is the single competitive advantage that any location has, in my humble opinion. So, yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's dive into that. Um, I've got some questions here, and feel free to go off on any tangents that you want. I think the, the more we do that, the more beneficial information is going to come out of this conversation today. So okay. feel free. You know, you, you're well known. You run one of the most established coaching and training businesses in the industry. I so see. just as a starting point for, for those not familiar with Trainertainment, just tell us a little bit about it. Well, you know, um, in 2005, I had this what people would refer to as an entrepreneurial seizure. I had been selling capital equipment like you guys in the family entertainment center. I got in that space because I had worked uh, for a wonderful, wonderful entrepreneur in the Dallas Fort Worth area. He, he uh, created the main event concept and I was pre main event. So that can kind of tell you how old I am. Right. And, um, I had what Michael Gerber would refer to as an entrepreneurial seizure uh, and decided that people were buying capital equipment from me because I was going on site and I was working with their staff about how to make money with the systems I was selling them. And so literally I was like, hey, there's a need. Why don't, why don't I make a company? to go help coach and train folks. And initially we were really focused and it's still a big focus of ours about how to build group and event sales. You know, that had been my, that had been my sweet spot. That's what I was good at personally and was able to take that professionally out into the market and had just a wonderful opportunity to work with literally hundreds of facilities across North America. And we just keep growing, we keep learning. And uh, and that's kind of what we're passionate about. We, we believe that if you can help people grow, um, it, it grows a business. When you help business grow, it helps communities, helps families. Like we, we believe we're on this mission and maybe it's a grandiose thinking on my part, but I think it makes a difference. But I think that's how entrepreneurs are built. And I think that's how people who, own family entertainment centers feel. I think they think, hey, I'm creating jobs. Uh, I'm, I'm providing something for my community. We've helped so many people open, as y'all have at LAI, where they just want to do something amazing for their community. And uh, yeah. and, and I, it's about the stuff. I love that facet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the facet of, like you said, it's about community and it takes big ideas to make big things happen, but it, it happens in small steps. Yes. And yeah. So, so much of the theme that I see around so many entertainment venue operations are tied back to the community. And I think yeah. that's a really, it's a great concept. It's a, it's a feel good concept, but it's really important. And I, I think it's, it's great that you guys saw an opportunity and this business grew out of that. It, it, it did. It did. I, you know, we work so much with first time employees and it makes a difference. Those kids are not disposable so many you know when you talk to the great operators out there they have they will tell stories with tears in their eyes about the people the young people that work for them in high school came back and worked for them during their college summers and then went off to be bank presidents right and come back to that entrepreneur and say oh it's because of you 
that I could do this. And I, and I think that's what we're at the business of is, is helping operators help those first time employees be the best they can be because they're going to go ahead and be the presidents of the companies out there in our communities. So Absolutely. I and it's, it's funny. I, I want to share a personal story here and I hope that my son doesn't mind this. I'm not going to name him, but one of my boys started off at 15 years old working at uh, an arcade here. It's a, it's actually a big, it's a big chain and I'm not going to name the chain either, but um, you know, fresh faced kid, 15 years old was given an opportunity there and through proper staff training and a really good coaching and development system, he's been there for over five years now and worked his way up to, uh, they, they want to promote him to a regional manager or, you know, an area manager. Oh and he's, he's in a position where he can make some decisions now. It's like, what do I want to do? And he's still young. But the, the personal development that I've seen come out of that, like you said, kids are not disposable. These are, no. these are community members and they're going to go on to be part of the, the leadership of our next generation. And That's so right. coaching has played a, a huge role in his development. Uh, and I think it's, yeah, I just wanted uh, to hit that point. Home. Give me goosebumps. <laughs> I'll offer. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So the first question here, this, this might seem obvious to a lot of people, but what is the importance of training and development? The, the broad question. Well, so, so I, it's so crazy because I think that, I think we think that it's easy you know, because we know it. And so um, we know how to fix games. We know how to use the POS. We think it's logical to know how to approach a customer or to recognize somebody needs some help. And it is not easy. It is not being taught. It's not being taught at home. It's not being taught at school. And our kids, like the thing I was just I don't even have my phone in here. It's awesome. Yay, I'm disconnected mm -hmm. from my phone. But but like what they know, they know everything because they can Google it. But what they don't know is what you and I are doing right now and talking to each other and raising their heads up and looking around and trying to figure out, oh, that customer's lost. That customer doesn't know how to how to work that game. That that guest is wondering what's behind that door and they need to be coached they need to be taught that stuff because they don't know it and here's what i know and and here's why i know it i i went out to an fec and i was trying to put together a i was trying to put together a team building concept at an adventure park and it was way out there for me it had jumpy things it had rock climbing, it had ropes courses, stuff that a middle age, I'm going to go with I'm middle age, can we do that? That a middle age gal that, you know, would be the target market at a company where you're trying to sell a team building concept at, at Trainer Time, we call those things play therapy. And so I couldn't put it together without doing it, without touching and feeling it. What's amazing is I had a young man who was helping me put this event together I, and we'd helped hire them because we'd helped open the location. And I said, oh, I'm trying to figure out what components that people would do. So in essence, he's my manager, right? I'm in a new yep. job situation. And this is how it hit me. He showed me what to do, which is a beautiful way to train the uh the training mantra is tell show do review okay so he told me he said okay you just jump and then flop over <laughs> into this thing yeah. it's like a like a big bubble thing and he told me what to do and then he jumped and he showed me and he even did a flip and i was like what? He said, oh, you don't have to do a flip. I'm like, you're damn right. I don't have to do a flip. I'll break my neck, you know? <laughs> and, and so I've, I've got an expert, which is what we are. Like when we're the leaders and we're training and we're coaching, we know how to do it. And it's easy for us. We've done it a thousand times, but here I was, and it was the first time and it was scary. And I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what the outcome would be. And I didn't know how it would feel. And I didn't know how I would look, right? And it was crazy because I had all that I needed, right? 
And so I start jumping, 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 jumping. And I promise what, what it looked like to me is that fluffy stuff I was supposed to jump over into, like it moved further away. <laughs> you know, I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm like, whoo. So I, I jump, I jump, I jump, and then I just stop. And how many times do new employees do that? They try, they try, they try, and then they're like, oh, I'm not ready. I can't do it. And I've heard managers say, I told them, I told them what to do. I showed them, I showed them three times how to do it. They just can't do it. Well, no kidding, they can't do it. They've never done it before. And so he encouraged me, which is what a good manager would do. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. It'll be fine. Jump, jump, jump. Don't do the flip. Just flop over, right? Yeah. So I finally do it. But now I'm like this big beached whale flopped (laughs) over in the fluffy stuff. And I got to get out, you know, and he's fantastic. Like he's a great manager. great. And he reaches his hand in there and he helps me get out. And I'm just embarrassed. Like I want to look better. I want it to be better. And I thought, and like that happened with every single thing, every single thing we did. I, I went up the rock climbing wall and I was scared. I was harnessed in. There was no way I could fail. Somebody from the bottom yelled, don't look down. I looked down and I was like, yeah. I'm coming down. I can't get there. Yeah. You know? And it just was, I was so struck because I think in leadership and in management, we're so good at, at what we do. Like that's why leaders get promoted because they're really good at it. And they're so far removed from being new. And I think it takes a lot longer for people to get up to speed than you would think. And I think it's a lot harder than we would think. And I know you might be going, Beth, we're talking about punching buttons. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about clearing a, a, a ticket jam. We're talking about running the POS at the redemption counter. I don't care. If they've never done it, they've never done it. And yeah. I, Well, I, and you're probably talking about the difference between somebody who you're setting up for success who can – who can just maintain the status quo, or you're going to have to continue to hold their hand or check up on them versus setting up somebody who can thrive and be an integral right. part of your business and, and then continue right. to grow up and teach others and in, in real success right. that way. So you make a, you make a perfect point because if we don't invest in that growth and that surety that they got it uh, and, and that encouragement that even when I make a mistake, they learn from that mistake and Hey, do it this way next time. What they do is they do just enough to get by. And and mm-hmm. and you know what they do? They leave. Or they don't perform like we want them to do. Or they run our customers off. It, it's crazy. And it's so important. And I tell you, that experience, I have a blog about it somewhere. And that experience was so profound for me from a leadership perspective. I don't know if there's a single thing I've done in the last five years that made me go, oh. Oh, my expectations have been all wrong. I, 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 I think people ought to learn faster than they learn. I think they ought, I, you know, you tell them one time, it doesn't matter. Maybe telling them isn't the way they learn. Maybe you have to show them. Maybe they have to do it. Maybe they have to do it 10 times. You don't know. That's a, great, that's a great point, actually. I want to stop you there. This is something really impactful that I just learned recently. And I, I coach basketball as a hobby on the side. And one of the things that I saw in a recent training video was that people learn different ways. And you right. don't think about this stuff. Some people are audible learners and you can just tell them and that's fine. They get it. Some people have to be shown. Some people physically have to do an action for it to sink yeah. in. And people don't realize this or, you know, obviously it's, I know it's part of your training paradigm is that you, you encompass all these things because people right. learn different ways and we forget that. Right. Right. And, and so much frustration can come from the manager because the manager usually thinks that people learn the way they learn. That makes sense. Like we know what we know. And yep. if you're dealing with somebody who's just like you, that's correct. But if you're not, it's um, it's complicated. It's really complex. And I think the great leaders get that, you, you know, and that they dig a little deeper and find we yeah. use 
Colby. When we do business coaching with leadership teams, we use Colby. And Colby manages, uh, Colby, Colby looks at the way people take action. It's a great way to see how people work. I don't know if you would use it with frontline team members, but you would absolutely use it with supervisory and management and executive level folks. Uh, it, may, it, it measures how do we gather and distribute information. So it's called Fact Finder. It measures mm-hmm. follow through. So like I'm a dreamer and I love solving the, pause, the puzzle. But once it gets really routine, oh, good God, I need to give it away to somebody else and let somebody else finish it and do the yeah. right things. Like I don't get any joy out of that. Um, and then there's a quick start. So that has everything to do with how much risk people are able to take. I'm like a nine. So I'm going to go jump off the mountain. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to leap before I look and yeah. which make people in my organization, because almost everybody in my organization is way more cautious than I am. Thank goodness. Right. They keep us on the yeah. track. You need people to bounce you out. I yeah. do. I do. <laughs> and then and that fourth one is that what you were talking about, Um, It's called implementer. So can people, are they more visual? Do they learn and they can envision it? Or do they need to to touch it and feel it and build a model? Or do they physically have to do the work? So it's a great Colby, K-O-L-B-E, for leadership teams and management teams for sure. Yeah. Okay. That's a great resource for people to look up. Um, you know, this is the the whole goal of of these talks is to give location owners and operators and uh, managers resources. So I think that's a great one. Yeah. We'll stick a link in the description to that. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about let's say we get people to the next level of training. We we get what we want. You know, we're connecting with with uh, our new employees on their level and and teaching them the way that they that they are able to learn most effectively. Yeah. Yeah. And we get there, we've got competent employees. One of my other questions here is uh, for owners and operators, I think, you know, one of the most important skills to have in the industry is to sell and oh, yeah. connect with guests. And so when we've got people to that, that next level, um, birthday parties are a huge, and events in general, they're a huge opportunity for entertainment venues. And you've written entire books about it. Uh, yeah. you know, people buy from people. I can see the book yeah. on your shelf. I'll stick a link to that in the description as well. Just what advice do you have? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what What advice do you have for businesses who are struggling to make more sales, or just just good general practice? That's right. Well, so here's my theory. I think people are selling or unselling your business all the time. I, I really do. And so, in the when people are walking up literally to the front desk that's a very transactional kind of selling platform even still we can upsell we can create a friendly atmosphere we can set people up to come again simply by saying things like hey welcome is this your first time have you been here before right how long can you stay today Mm -hmm. uh Hey, listen, it is, it's going to be dinner time while you're here. I've got a food and fun package, right? It's those kinds of like that stuff. It has to happen that fast at the front desk in the sales office where they're selling birthday parties. One of the things that is such a common, and I think it's a mistake and I'm sorry to, to be that, that sounds real critical, but one of the things that happens is a customer calls and says, hey, I'd like to, I like information on a birthday party. And so then we just begin to kind of what I would refer to as pitch slap people. So we, begin I love to, that. yeah, we begin, I wish, I wish I'd have thought of it. I borrowed it from another great sales guru, but um, uh, yeah. we, we begin to just answer their question right so we're telling we're not selling and because when we're just talking about ourselves that that's not the way to sell easily right yeah and we can waste our time just by pitching out a whole bunch of information the better way to do it is when a guest calls and says hey can you tell me about your birthday parties if you say something like Yes, and I'm so glad you called us. We have the best birthdays in town. Please tell me about our our party 
king or queen? Are we planning for a boy or a girl? Uh, how old are they going to be? How many folks do you plan to invite, children and adults? Right? When I begin to get some of that information, I much better know what to present, right? Because if they're a four year old and I have toddler kinds of party packages, why in the world would I talk to them about my tween or teen packages? I'm going to waste the guest time. I'm going to, I'm going to waste my time. Mm -hmm. And when I can ask a handful of what I would call qualifying questions, it makes it so much easier. Then I'm going to present the right program. Maybe it's a program with or without food. And I'm going to say, you know, of those two packages, which would Debbie and her little friends love the most, right? And I'm going yeah, to go ahead the and- The sale almost makes itself at that stage, it, right? It absolutely does. We have a whole birthday party. Uh, it's called the BDSQF, a birthday sales qualification form. And it just walks anybody through how they should sell a birthday party and not just tell about the information. And the people that are doing that, they're, you know what they're doing? They're closing 65 to 70 percent of the people that inquire about their birthday parties. That's incredible because the people who yeah. aren't doing that, I can tell you the data I have says they're closing 30 or 35 percent. What if you could close twice as many parties as you're closing right now? Like do the math. It's The numbers yeah. work. So anyway, that's, it's that's an, what it's all about. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an easy but it is a training. It is a training initiative it is helping the people that champion birthday parties in your centers understand what the goals are it's about having goals for what you want for party sales or for group sales and then and then dedicating a champion for it it makes a huge difference so. yeah and i'm a big advocate of brand building and this is this is a brand building exercise it feels good to have an interaction like that it feels yeah. good for the employee. It feels good for the customer. Yes. And that customer is going to come back. They, you've, they've had a significant positive experience with your right. venue in that scenario. You've made a sale. They've had a great experience. And they're going to think about you next time they have a birthday. It's, right. It works well beyond that single sale, right? It, it does. I think it does, Tyburn. I think it. I think what happens, it makes it so much easier for them to recommend us to their friends and people people buy from their friends a whole lot easier than they buy from us and so that 100 percent huge just huge yeah 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 awesome stuff okay we're going to take a quick commercial break i'm going to cut over to allison for a couple of quick announcements and we'll be right back thanks Tabor. hi everyone this is allison and i want to let you know about our back to school part special we have going on right now for a limited time, you can save the sales tax on hyperpitch baseballs. That's a savings of 8.25% on every pack of 12 baseballs ordered. So head on over to parts.laigames.com and stock up. Angry Birds Coin Crash is most successful when there are towers on the game to attract players, and we've made it easy to build manual towers anytime you need them. Check out our short video tutorial at youtube.com slash LAI games. And speaking of Angry Birds Coin Crash, we want to let you know that two of our most popular decals for the game are now available on our online parts store. The first is the QR code decal that links to a great video by influencer Arcade Matt, where he explains exactly how to play Coin Crash. The second is the incremental credit decal that lets players know they'll get more coins for each credit they put on the game. Check them out at parts.laigames.com. All right, we are back with Beth Stanley of Trainertainment talking about training and coaching. Now, one of the biggest challenges, Beth, that we know everybody's facing is staffing problems. Yeah. And we were talking earlier about kids not being disposable. You know, when you hire somebody and you invest that time, you want to retain employees. What can businesses do to to do just that, train them properly and retain them and make these employees want to stick, stick with the business. Well, I think it's, um, I think it's multifaceted. I think, uh, first you, you need to be able to kind of get it out of your head and into their heart, what you stand for and why you're there. And so that speaks to what your vision is about being in business and what your values are, because I'm, I gotta tell you, you cannot, you, you can't, you 
You can't coach and train somebody who doesn't share your values. You just can't do it. Um, in my own company, for instance, we, we believe in having fun, promoting being and having fun. We believe in, um, being in service to others. I think that if you, I think that if the whole world believed we were in service to each other, the whole world would be better. I believe in intentional learning when I I'm, I'm in the process, for instance, of hiring a sales manager at this time. And, um, one of the first things I have to ask is, What's the last thing you've read or what's the last podcast you watch? People learn in different ways, right? Yeah. And if they're not an avid learner, they don't fit in, in a training or a coaching company. They just don't. It would be arrogant of us to think we could coach and train people if we weren't voracious learners. And so we have to understand that. Um, we believe in high performance. You know, I'm not in a position to hire people out of college and teach them how to be trainers. We have to ha have people who can do that, uh, which yeah. is why we wind up, we wind up bringing in people who have quite a bit of um, industry experience because I just, I, I, I can't take 30 years of expertise and dump that into, into folks. That's not how we're built. Yeah. And they have to take initiative because we're virtual. Everybody works from home, from whatever state or city they live in. And so we're real clear about what it takes to be on this team. And when, when a, when an operator will decide, and here's what they need to do. Like, here's the easy thing to do. Think about your very, very best employee. If you're an owner operator out there, just get a picture in your mind of your very best team member and then start making a list like see them and then start making a list of all the reasons why they came to your mind and you're gonna I suspect you'll write things down like they were fun they were reliable they had a lot of energy they were um they were they encouraging initiative. others they took initiative like I I, I I mean, who wouldn't want that kind of person? I, I, I had a bunch of party hosts when I was on site in the early days. I had I had a team of about 25 and all of those things I just named, I needed those people to exude, right? They needed to be outgoing if they were going to be a party host and then stop settling. And I know, I know that's a hard thing to hear, but one of the things I think that happens in our industry is we think that we're going to skimp on what we pay people. And then when we do that, then we settle for whomever. And mm -hmm. here's the deal. 16 and 17 years, 16 and 17, it's, it's not an unemployment problem for an FEC. It's not the fact that the unemployment rate's so low. We hire first time workers and it's a giant responsibility. It's a giant responsibility. Yeah. And the difference that you make because you take those young people on and help mold them and shape them into the people that are going to go out in the world. Oh, it makes me emotional to think about it. Yeah. It's a big responsibility and they're not disposable. And, and, and the jobs you have aren't disposable. And, and you may have to pay a bigger wage than you would like. But if you get the right people, here's the deal. You get the right people, you can hire one person for $13 to $15 an hour instead of two people at 10 that might show up for work. Like, yeah, you don't well, need it's more that. management when you're, yeah, if you don't have that level of expertise and develop that, let's say at a, at a higher hourly rate for that perfect person, and you're spending more of your own time and resources and inconsistency inconsistent oh. delivery for you know the expectation for customers it costs you a lot more out oh, of wow. you know it's not not the money that you're paying in the paycheck it costs costs a lot more in a lot of other oh, I don't areas even, right we can't measure we cannot measure what it costs us to have the wrong person in place yeah we don't because they deliver terrible service or they're not there and and then we can't 
provide the kind of service we mean to. And then it just trickles down and those people never come back and they tell their friends and they never come visit us. And I mean, I, I don't even know how to measure it. And I know it's hard. It's way easier to be on my side and preach what you should do. Yeah. I get it. I get it. And it's been difficult, but young people are first time team members and they need you and they need you to coach them and to train them or they need us to come alongside you and help yeah. coach them and train or you need us to coach you to train them I, I don't know it it matters it matters a whole ton and yes um, and, and these young people are worth investing in they really are but they it, our parents and grandparents said the same things about us that we're saying, you know, these kids today, they don't want to yeah. work, blah, blah, blah. If you don't think your parents and your grandparents weren't saying the same thing about you, well, you're wrong. You're exactly wrong. right. Yeah. It's Every generation topic. thinks thinks <laughs> that way of the next generation, right? Yeah. So the, the message here, and I think the good takeaway here is don't be afraid to invest in good people. You train that's them right. right, and they're going to be great employees for a long time, and that's how you retain good people. That's right. And don't settle. If they don't believe what you believe, yeah. don't hire them. And I know you need somebody to fill the position, but you don't need the wrong person. You spend way too much time and energy. I was working with a client this week, late on a, on a Tuesday night, having the same conversation about a team member that wasn't performing. And I said, I said, listen, I'm willing to have as many conversations as you want to have, but how much energy do you want to spend on it? And what else could you be spending your energy on if you had the right person in the seat instead of the wrong person? Like they were yeah. wanting confirmation from me about what they should do. They didn't need confirmation from me. They knew what they need to do. You know? Yeah. And it's a hard decision. Oh, it's it's got to so be a really hard, hard decision to, to make that choice. It's so hard. Yeah. Because people are people and you love them and, you know, but. Yeah. They but that's be the, the right key people. to success. You, that's it. You got to be the right person. And you got to make those hard decisions sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of, of young people, and um, I, I'm sure that it's a totally different topic that I don't want to segue into, but, you know, the, the problem with technology and phones and all that type of stuff, I'm sure yeah. there's lots of good protocols for that. But the, the real question I want to ask around this as it relates to business objectives you know, with social media being so prominent and customer feedback and reviews, it's easy for people to post bad reviews. There's, sure. they don't have to take accountability for it. They can share their thoughts sure. with a really wide audience. How do you suggest, and I don't, do you have any protocols for businesses dealing with angry customers, especially well, online? I think you have to deal with it right up front. And um, I, I think you have to deal with it immediately. I have, I think you have to be, and it's so hard because the easy, the human thing to do is to be defensive and, um, and to make excuses and to make the customer wrong. I do not think the customer is always right, contrary to popular belief. Um, but what I think you have to do in the social space is I think you have to acknowledge it. I hear you. I understand you've had a terrible experience. Here's my, you know, I'm going to DM you, a direct message. Mm -hmm. you. Here's my private information. Please give me a call as soon as possible. And I think that visibly, when you can publicly show that you're ready to do something about it and talk with the person, because listen, I'm the lady that wrote the book, People Buy From People, right? How to connect personally. Mm -hmm the impersonal world on social media when it's one way conversation and we're talking at each other and not with each other it's so damaging and so I think I think in any of those negative situations I think acknowledging wow it looks like you really had a bad experience I'm the owner I'm the general manager whatever you want to say and I'd like to talk to you about this personally I'm going to dm you my direct line, please call me as soon as possible. So the public can see that out front, that you're yeah. ready to take action. And I think that's the best that you can do. I think the worst you can do is get in a 
you know, war of words. Yeah. Out in social space. Because the thing, if you do what I just said, all those people who love you, because more people love you than don't love you. I mean, unless you really have an awful business. Yeah. I think more people love you than don't love you. And so lots of those people will come to your rescue and let the public do that. But you people to person to person acknowledge, man, I see you. I hear you. You had a terrible experience. I'd like to talk to you about it personally. Here's my, here's my, here's my direct phone line. So, yeah, I, I'm a believer in that philosophy as well. And my take on that would be, that a lot of the community out there probably, and again, depending on the voice and tone of somebody's co complaint online, and it is unfortunate that people talk at each other, but oh. a lot of the community can see the intent behind the message and gauge for themselves whether or not this customer Somebody has a valid complaint. Care. And yeah. so when you stand up and you just at least address the problem, I think you just build a certain level of credibility and trust with the audience anyway to say, hey, right. guys, this isn't falling on deaf ears. Even though this is a ridiculous complaint and everybody's aware of that, um, it's it's not falling it's on deaf ears. We're addressing it. Yeah. That's right. It matters to the customer who's making the complaint. I had a terrible experience with, I think it was, I, I'm not even going to say, a, a car company. Uh, you know, I travel all the time. I had a, yeah. I had a terrible experience. I sent an open letter, like on LinkedIn. You know, I did it on in a social. I space. read the. Uh, I read that letter. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Literally, I I sent the open letter trying to get because I had I had tried to contact them, like not publicly, and the, didn't yeah. get anything. And so I did the open letter and and, and pushed that out there. And the car company folks never contacted me back. And what was crazy is that um, other customers reached out to me, which was wild. And and they said, did you ever get any word back? Did you get any? I'm like, no, I didn't get anything. Recently, and this is what you might have seen, I, I had a, a challenge with my, um, my car service folks right up mm -hmm. the street. And I did, I did the same thing. I was very frustrated with how it was treated because they just didn't hear me and they tried to make the problem my fault. And I was yeah. just trying to give them information and the owner called me and, and, you know, and it made a difference. It made a real big difference. It took about a week, but the owner literally called me and, and fixed it. And so it matters. It, it, it matters. And I think it like, I think it matters with your internal team because I like to think about your team being an internal guest. And so you want to back your team members publicly. You know, if, if somebody's ripping up a team member, I don't think you need to bash that team member in in public at all. I think you need to do that privately and take care of them. And then the same with the customer. I just don't think it, I don't think it, I don't think it helps to bash a customer. And, and and we all want to. People are crazy. Yeah, they they're crazy. and they're getting yeah. seem like they're getting crazier. Right by the minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, you know, obviously we've you know crazy people. We just dealt with the pandemic and kind of finally oh. feel like we're coming out of that. The other side, we've got supply chain issues. Yep. What do you see as the biggest challenges facing entertainment venues moving forward? Well, I, if you would have asked me six weeks ago, I would have leaned heavy on it being trying to have enough people. But it does feel like to me that that's getting a whole lot better. Like I'm experiencing it as a consumer out in the marketplace with hospitality. And, mm -hmm. um, and we're experiencing it as a company in that is that we're getting engaged again, helping family entertainment centers. So they finally have people for us to coach and train and work with. So I would have said it was probably, I would have said it was probably team members and having even enough, not even just like the challenge was they were just bringing anybody in that would say just they would to fill there. seats. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's a real problem, but um, it looks like 
that's getting better. And, and so when I'm saying things like be stubborn about who gets to come to work for you and things like that, I think that's probably the biggest, I think that's the biggest opportunity from a problem point of view. I'm a little anxious about, um, about the high cost, you know, inflation and, and recession, except that in 08, 09, and 10, what happened is people just stayed closer to home, you, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we had opportunity in, in the family entertainment center market in that we had staycation. And so the things to look for would be that people still had birthday parties but they just didn't get to invite the whole class. They had to stick to minimums and things like that. And so, so the business didn't go away. It just might be, they just might not spend as much in that they didn't have as many people, right? Yeah. They spent, yeah. they spent just as much per person or more. They just didn't have as many people. So I, I would, that's a thing I'm kind of concerned about. Um, I am not concerned about the holiday event season. I think people are in revenge party mode. And I yeah. think I think we're going to have the best holiday party season we've ever had. And so if you don't have a focus on group sales, shame on you. You ought to be ramping that up huge. If you don't have a group sales champion with the biggest group goals you've ever had, shame on you. Because because this is, we are poised for for big, 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 big things. Um, I think when I talk with industry partners and stuff, the cost of building right now is crazy. I think the I think the interest rates are going up, maybe pressure some. And so I wonder if the new facility piece will calm down and and that might not might not be as big. But I think business for businesses that are doing well and that are mm -hmm. ran well, I, I think we're poised for yeah. several years. Yeah. But I, listen, I'm the same girl who thought that COVID was going to last like 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I so I don't know why. Don't ask me. I know nothing. You know, I'm not oh, very that's, smart. Uh, hey, that's, that was a really tough one. It's everything's perfect yeah. in hindsight, isn't it? But oh. yeah, that was a, I'm my, thinking my, we're all happy that we're through that. Oh, my best friend in the world says I look at everything through rose-colored glasses. So yeah. you know, I, I, I believe you like, have to. I think you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, okay. So what you said a, a minute ago, and I absolutely agree with you. We're we're kind of in a slow slower period seasonally for FECs in the U.S. And I absolutely agree with you that as we come out of this, we are poised for awesome you know, revenge party mode, as you put it. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think people, uh, businesses, operators, owners need to start preparing for that. Yeah. There's probably, uh, I'll make this statement to promote you because I believe this yeah. statement is that there's never, a, there's never a bad time to train or there's, you can really never do enough training. There's always an opportunity. I'm a big fan of resetting every once in a while and just saying, let's, oh, let's yeah. even if I'm, even if I've got a lot of momentum, it's time to just go back to square one, refocus and yeah. pick up those things that you've missed and just look at things with fresh eyes. And so there's probably never a bad time to train. Never. And I wanted to, I want to look at with our slow period now, future huge opportunity as we go into the Christmas and holiday, just holiday season in general, what does train entertainment have in the pipeline for upcoming events that people can take advantage of? Yeah. So we have a, we have a fabulous birthday party, um, we have a birthday party conference. It's at the end of September. You can just go to our website and look at events and it, you can sign up straight away. It's very inexpensive. It's two and a half full days of everything you need to have the best birthday party program on earth. We have ongoing um, sales coaching for groups. We never put anybody in a competitive market space into a group. We'd start a new group if y'all were in, in competitor spaces. We, yep. We've been always, we've done what we called Evolve sales coaching where we either bi-weekly or weekly sales coach groups and organizations with their birthday and their group program. So those are all big. We're going to be at um, 
360, a movement 360 next week. We'll obviously be at IAPA in November. We're going to be at the Southwest Bowling Conference in October. So we're all we're always going to be in a town near you. I'm going to the Chapter 9 RSA event on October 25th and speaking there. So you can you can always find us and you can invite us to to come do a sales kickoff. You know what I really like about what you said as far as resetting? In our business coaching program, we primarily work with leadership teams and the science tells us that, that we have to plan, we have to look out there and we have to look, we like to take a six year look, a three year look, and then a one year look. And then what can we do for 90 days? Because the science says we can only focus for about 90 days and then we kind of lose our way. And so we love that in our business coaching program, we do reset with teams every single 90 days and it's just it's such good work it's one of my very favorite things to get to do for my own company and you know what's awesome although we coach and do this work we have a coach i do not we do not lead our own quarterlies we do not lead our own annual planning i bring somebody in to do it because i so believe that that's what entrepreneurs and owners need is they need a coach to help ask the right question. So training yeah. in yeah, training in and of itself is not a single event. It shouldn't yeah. it, it's a, it's an ongoing thing. I think coaching is is kind of where my heart is because that's a piece that creates accountability and growth. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, people can find more information at trainertainment.com. Dot net. Dot net. Trainer, trainertainment.net. Excellent. We I will leave dot, a link in yeah. the description. Yeah, I think .net would take you to the right. I mean, .com might take you to the right spot, but it's technically .net. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, that's it for today's episode of Arcade Cast. I really want to thank you, Beth. This was a great, insightful conversation with a lot of great takeaways for our owners and operators. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you have any questions, feedback, or comments, you can submit them at laigames.com slash arcadecast. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more content, and we hope everybody has a great rest of your day.